Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're taking a look at a very fun gambit that got played against me, the Sicilian Wing Gambit. Basically it's when you play the pawn up here to b4 and you're trying to gambit the pawn so that you can get a very strong center here for white. Now although I do think this is, is a very good fun opening for white, I'm going to be showing you how to play it from the black perspective and try to stop the attack that's going to happen against you. So. Let's get to it, guys. In this game, I'm playing against a very strong Fide Master, 25-45, so let's see how we do. Let's start from the beginning. I started, uh, My opponent started off with e4. I started off with c5. I love to play our Sicilian over here. Pawn to b4, and now we have what's called the Wing Sicilian Gambit. And the idea is very simple. You know, although it is a free pawn, if you take it, White's going to get two pawns in the center. They say the best way to beat a Gambit is to accept them, so I went ahead and played. Pawn takes over here on b4. Like I said, I have developed a system against this, which has really reduced the attacking chances that white gets. My opponent played a3, and here by no means are you forced to take it, but well, I'm going to go ahead and take it anyways. Pawn takes over here on a3. Bishop takes on a3, and this is a very typical move. And the uh, reason why this can be a little hard to deal with is because when you take this pawn, the bishop comes out, and now it's not so simple to move your e-pawn unless you want to lose the right to castle. And I've tried that a few times, like playing e6 and D, uh, even e5 in some of these lines, but here I figured out a very easy way to do it. We're just going to go ahead and fianchetto uh, g6, bishop g7, knight f6, and not move the e-pawn at all. As you can see, it's actually going to stunt this bishop quite a bit. In fact, in some of these lines, if you play e6 too fast, after bishop takes or they take, then the knight actually goes to a3. This knight had a little bit of uh, trouble trying to bring out the pieces. So here I just continue with my development. Knight to c6. This is actually important too for my line. White plays the very same move, d4. And here you have to stop the idea of black uh, of white playing pawn to d5 here. If white gets two pawns in the center, you are going to have a bad position. So, simple chess, what do you play here? You go ahead and play pawn to d5. Now this is very interesting. So here my opponent played the line that definitely makes the line easier for me. They went ahead and played e5. Definitely not the best move here. A more challenging try here is actually to take on d5. Because after queen takes on d5, they can play knight f3 with the idea of playing pawn to c4. Now I do believe I'm still better in these lines as black, but these are far more challenging as you have a mobile center, meaning the pawns can be pushed forward, and I have to deal with all the threats. Here, I switch into a French position, a French pawn structure, and uh, well, I can defend when I play the French. I don't play the French, but I typically would transpose into it with my Sicilian, so yeah, I'm quite happy at this scenario. So d4, d5, pawn to e5, not the best move, not many people realize that. And now, let's go to our idea, pawn to g6. It may seem weird to Fianchetto, but like I said, if you play the pawn up, you're not going to be castling anyways. Pawn c3 gets played. I mean, I must say, I am jealous. I love these pawn structures for white whenever you're attacking. You can see that the pawn structure is saying, hey, let's attack the king over here. Bishop g7, I need to castle as soon as possible and not waste time. Pawn to f4 gets played. Again, I cannot say anything ill about this. I love this pawn structure as white. I don't care what the computer says. Knight h6 gets played. Obviously, the knight is not going to go to f6, but it goes to h6. And here you see it can go to f5 or g4. It depends what white plays the next few moves. Bishop d3 gets played. And this is typically one of the best squares for the bishop, as it's going to be attacking toward the king side. Obviously, nothing goes on on e2, and c4 is not good. b5, I'm very happy if they give me this bishop for this knight, as this is a very good attacking bishop to attack the king with. Here castles. As you can see, I was able to castle quite easily. Like I said, a lot of times I was playing e6 right away and getting into bad positions. So here I was able to castle, and black is now slightly better. Here, white played pawn h3. Definitely not the best move here. As we're going to see in this game, white overextended for the attack, which makes sense. I mean, they're a gambit player, right? They like to take risks. So here we're going to see them push the pawns forward. And I was not too worried about this. Um, you know, whenever you fee in keto, it is one of the safest places uh, your king can be. So yeah, bring it on, that's what I say. Here I went ahead and played bishop f5. I saw that they can play pawn to g4 here to get a free tempo off the bishop, but like I said, I'm not too worried about this. And here I'm very happy if they play bishop takes as my knight will just take back here. Here they went for it. Here we go, pawn to g4, bishop takes, queen takes, and this may look a little bit scary to some players, but here I will just say, you know, if you're playing the black perspective here, 
um, you should be very happy because White's not going to be castling Kingside anytime soon. They're not going Queenside any anytime soon. So it's up to you. What do you do in these kind of situations? Shoot. Here in this kind of situations, you need to open up the center or try to make pawn exchanges. You need open files and diagonals to attack your opponent's king. So it's black to move. What do you play here? All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and give us that like and subscribe. Remember, like in this video is going to share this with more chess players. So, did you figure out the move here? I mean, there's some good little moves you could play here, like rook c8. Hopefully no one played rook e8. That's not a good move. Your, uh, your rook's not going to get active on this file at all. Here, believe it or not, you get to play pawn to f6. And this turns out to be a very good move. Very simple chess. You want to take on e5, and either the f4 pawn will become a target, or you get this open f file for your rook. Notice this bishop did not do too much this game here. And here, my opponent went ahead and played knight to f3. Some people might be a little bit worried. What happens if pawn takes over here? Believe it or not, you can sacrifice material here and be okay. Here, I was getting ready to play. Rook takes on f6. Pawn g5 gets played, but don't worry. Rook e6 check. You don't even need to sacrifice material if you don't want to. And uh, here with the king getting checked, the knight's going to go to f5. Black is in a very good position. All right, back to the game. The knight goes to f3 here, just trying to hold down the fort. I remember, like we said, open files and diagonals to attack your opponent's king. So let's go ahead and take. Pawn takes back over here, best move, or else they'd lose the pawn. And let's just keep getting our pieces active. Here, this knight is not doing too much over here, so I usually move the knight back to f7. And here, um, there, there's a few different ideas it has. Sometimes you get lucky and your opponent will push the pawn forward, yay. The knight jumps to d6, and now you see we have this beautiful e4 or c4 outpost for our knight. And they're more than welcome to take, as it just helps me develop my queen. Um, in the game, they weren't so nice to me. They're, like I said, this was a very aggressive player. They went ahead and played pawn to h4, looking to try and pry open the king side as soon as possible. I got h5 and g5 ideas coming over here. That's okay. You're not, you don't scare me. Let's keep developing. Let's keep making threats. Here I played queen to d7, attacking the unprotected pawn. As I like to say, don't threaten me with a good time. I will attack you back. And here, you must, you best believe, I will be attacking on g4 to win the pawn. And even think about sacrificing on e5 with one of my pieces if given the opportunity. Um, this is just something that is demanded in the position. As you can see over here, look at these pieces. These guys are all asleep. I'm going to wake up my pieces as soon as possible. Here, white uh, played rook over to g1. Makes sense. It defends the pawn. Let's just keep developing pieces. We're not in too big of a rush here. Rook over to c8. Here, the idea is to play knight a5, so you can put pressure on the c pawn, and maybe even something like knight b3, knight to c4. Again, good activity, developing all my pieces. I'm very happy with my position, as all my pieces have been moved at least one time. As you can see over here, we have some sleeping pieces still. White played h5, a very good looking move. Here the idea is either to take on g6 and the queen can take back or the hope would be they uh, they want me to take take and now the rook has a beautiful open file. Although this is actually okay for me I definitely don't like it from the human perspective just because why give your opponent a good rook on an open file to attack your king. Here I played an interesting looking move a move I probably would not have known if I hadn't seen so many Bobby Fischer games. I played the knight back to h8. Um, it's an interesting move. The idea is that if they take, I can actually take back with their knight. By all means, they should not take, but my opponent was playing fast here, so they took. Knight takes, and now, well, look at my knight. It is a stud. It is. It has many good squares for him. Here, white played knight d2, trying to get the rest of the pieces out. Knight to f4. You know I'm going to play the knight here, attack the queen for free. And here, they played the queen back to c2. Lots of tactics in this position. Um, here I went ahead and played knight to a5, trying to open up and get some good uh, targets for my rooks. Rook over to h1, and here, well, I did see the idea, they're trying to put pressure on the h7 pawn, and well, I didn't like the idea of pushing the pawn forward. If h6, they could play something like g5 and try to pry it open. So here I just brought the knight back to g6. Uh, yeah, I think that this is a very fine move here. My opponent played knight to g5 here. It looks like another very good move because it's putting pressure on h7. And I can't push the pawn anymore or else queen takes on g6. But here it does say that it is a blunderous move. It's black to move. What do you play here? All right, hopefully you push pause and try to figure it out. 
whenever you get to this kind of position, remember, you should be looking to go ahead and give your opponent material if you get some attacking chances. And after calculating for a few seconds, I realized I have plenty of good attacking chances. Here we go. Queen takes on g4. They're more than welcome to take on h7 here. They took back the way that I thought they would. They went ahead and took back with the knight. And this actually doesn't do too much here, as my knight is actually being defended by my queen. And, uh, well, they are attacking my rook. Like I said, worst case scenario, I can always sacrifice it. But here I saw the in-between move, or the move after that. I went ahead and played queen to g3 check. Now, white has lost their right to castle, and the game is pretty much over at this point. It is now negative five here. Uh, negative six now, dear lord. King went over to d1. I mean, obviously, there's nowhere else really good to go. Now I bring the rook in. Rook over to f2. This just makes plenty of sense to me. The rook's pinning the knight over here to the queen. I already have a nice threat of attack. And, uh, well, you can see that white's attack has definitely been stopped. At this point, there really is no good move for my opponent, so the game ends uh, pretty fast here. Bishop b4 to attack the knight. Simple chess, what do you do with pinned pieces? You add pressure. Knight to c4 gets played, and there really is just no good way to stop either knight e3 check, forking the king and the queen, or the simple rook takes d2, forking king and queen here. Here my opponent played knight takes, and of course I just took back the queen. The rest of the game is just a little bit uh, showy, so I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. King takes on c2, rook takes on c4, rook to g1 attacking my queen, queen f2 check, king over to b3. After looking at this for a second, I saw a very nice attacking idea. Rook takes b4. Do you have to sacrifice? No, but I definitely like it. Here, they went ahead and played king takes, and now the idea, queen to b2 check. At this point, my opponent had only two moves to play here that is really not going to uh, get him checkmate. Well... What is the move here? Here white made the wrong move and played king to c5 and got checkmated in two moves. It's black to move. Do you see it? Push pause and find the moves. Alright, don't be push pause and try to figure it out. Here, believe it or not, it's queen b6 check, king takes on d5, and queen to c6 for check and mate. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Remember, this was called the Wing Gambit. Just remember, if you do have to play against this, try not to move your e-pawn, especially because a lot of times they will play bishop takes trying to stop you. Go ahead and try to go ahead and just fianchetto. Oh, do not let them play pawn to d5, so go ahead and play d5 yourself. And this is going to stop them from getting a very strong center. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>